European Union had said that the latest developments in the Hong Kong were extremely worrying. EU's foreign policy chief Federica Bogorini said that the 28-member bloc was monitoring the situation closely. The Hong Kong police on Friday arrested four pro-democracy protesters. This included youth leader Joshua Wong, who was later released on bail. In aftermath of the arrest, protests planned for the weekend have been postponed indefinitely. Donald Trump's personal assistant, Madeline, Madeline Westerhout, has resigned over an information uh, breach route. The sudden departure comes after Trump learned that Westerhout uh, had talked about his family and White House matters at an off-the-record session with reporters. Reporters in U.S. media say that the Trump has taken serious view of the leaks and she will not be allowed to enter the White House again. Westerhout has been described as Trump's gatekeeper. She was Trump's personal aide from the beginning of his presidency. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has said that the aid to Africa should not leave African nations saddled with uh, debt. He was speaking at the closing ceremony of the Tokyo International Conference on African Development. Abe asserted that the need to help the African nations to develop and prosper. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said the conference has been quote-unquote uh, great achievement. A guest at the conference were later hosted by the Japanese Emperor Naruhito and his consort for a tea party. Grand celebrations took place in East Timor today as the country celebrates 20 years of its independence vote. The UN back vote ended a bloody decades long occupation by Indonesian forces, banners, and flags dotted the capital city as residents participated in the festivities. People also took part in the traditional performances and sports competitions. Islamic State has claimed responsibility for a suicide attack at the Yemeni port of Aden, the attack on August 29th, and has killed three separatist fighters and wounded several others. The attack targeted a patrol party from the security bell group. Reports say that the suicide bomber crashed his bomb-laden bike into the patrol vehicle. This was the first attack since the Yemeni government forces were expelled from Aden on the 10th of August. Remember, the port of Aden has seen a surge in violence. This has complicated efforts to the to end the Yemen war. Tunisia's uh, Enna Hadapari has launched the presidential campaign for its vice president, Abdel Fattah Moro, at the event in Tunis. Um, the Moro attended the campaign event with party president, who announced that the electoral program Marawa lawyer says that his aim to, is to unite Tunisia and transform it into the capital for the African continent. The moderate Islamists will face 25 other candidates in the country's presidential election due to be held on September 15. And it is say that Moro has a good chance of surviving the first round of election because his secularist vote is split. Tensions in Georgia's breakaway South Ossetia regions risks are escalating into a military confrontation. This after separatist forces deployed troops at the administrative boundary line. The ambassador of the EU to Georgia has called the developments as quote-unquote unacceptable following the Russia-Georgia war in August 2008. Georgia's region of the South Ossetia and Abkhazia have been controlled by Russian-sponsored regimes. The EU also has an unarmed civilian monitoring mission deployed in the region since September 2008. The testers marched before the start of school in Algeria capital against the ruling class. This is the 28th consecutive Friday that has been taken to the 
streets and anti-government protests. The protests have now entered their seventh month. Algerians have been demanding better education standards and also an overhaul of the current ruling elite. People of Buenos Aires uh, took to the streets to call for an increase in wages. This comes just when Argentina's currency, peso, braces under the weight of inflation. Peso fell drastically on Friday, recording its worst this month. Earlier, the Argentine government announced to reprofile around the 100 billion in debt. This move is igniting worries of a full-blown debt crisis in Latin America's third largest economy. Tibetans in exile living in the Indian capital New Delhi today carried out a peace march in solidarity with the Hong Kong protesters. Members of Tibetan Youth Congress participated in the rally and condemned the Chinese intervention in internal policies of Hong Kong. India is home to a large community of Tibetans, including the exile leader the Dalai Lama. For months now, thousands of protesters in Hong Kong have been protesting against a controversial extradition bill. The protests have managed to grab eyeballs from all across the globe. Hurricane Dorian strengthened into a major storm with winds of 115 miles per hour. With the path of the storm is still uncertain, coastal Florida residents were not under evacuation orders yet, but were stocking up on food, water and other supplies and making preparations to flee their homes. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has in, in fact issued a declaration of emergency for all of these states. 67 counties and urged its millions of residents to take preparations for what he has said could be a major event. Firefighters in Bolivia continue to douse the fires burning across the country. A million hectares of farmland and forests have been burning for almost two months now. The Bolivian government has said that half a million hectares of land has been destroyed. President Evo Morales has said that the virgin forest was worst affected. Firefighters battled a wildfire that has burned three homes, heavily damaged by more and prompted the evacuation of hundreds of people into Salt Lake City suburbs. Occupants of more than 400 homes fled but no injuries were reported, according to the police. The fire started at about 1 a.m. local time during a thunderstorm and its cause is still under investigation. Strong winds blowing out from mountains helped spread the rapidly moving fire into residential neighborhoods. Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg joined other young activists outside the United Nations headquarters to call for more action to combat climate change. 16-year-old joined several dozen other activists who waved placards and gave speeches. One speaker criticized both U.S. political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans for taking political donations from fossil fuel companies. Youth climate activists have also planned a large demonstration on September 20th. Thunberg is in New York to speak at the U.N. Climate Action Summit on 23rd September.
Fireworks World Championship got underway in Berlin and at the city's Olympic Stadium. Crowds watched on as performances of Poland and Slovenia lit up the sky as part of the two-day event. Six international teams will compete with each display lasting 15 minutes. Professionals from the fireworks industry and various celebrities will decide the winner. Tibet is celebrating its Shodan festival, which is also known as the Yogurt Festival. Hundreds of thousands of locals and travelers join in the annual ceremony of unveiling Buddha. Now, these Buddhists carried a giant Buddha and honored the deity. After the unveiling, many locals joined their families to eat yogurt and enjoy various traditional cultural activities. Restoration of the Cuba's capital building continues. Workers have now started uh, to unveil the work being done on its dome. The work is expected to be completed by November this year. The government has been restoring the building since 2013 and hopes to use it as the seat of the National Assembly once reconstruction is done. A French court is set to pronounce a judgment on a legal case file against, a, in fact, a rooster. Well, yes, you heard that right. A rooster. According to the neighbors, a rooster, which lives in western French village, makes too much noise for their comfort. According to them, the rooster would, in fact, make noise and wake everyone up at 5 a.m. every morning, which they would hear from the window a couple of meters away. The lawsuit has shed a light on a growing misunderstanding between residents of French uh, areas and locals of small town villages in rural France. The world's largest yacht, the Rev Ocean Research Vessel, has left a Romanian shipyard for its journey to Norway. The vessel will be fitted with technical gear and scientific equipment for its mission to carry out research to safeguard oceans. The 183 meters long ship is scheduled to reach a shipyard in Norway in the beginning of October after 35 days. It will be, in fact, uh, equipped for missions covering the entire marine ecosystem in the Earth's oceans. Taipei Zoo celebrated the 15th birthday of two giant pandas which were gifted to Taiwan by China in 2008. The zoo prepared two special made ice cakes decorated with seasonal fruits and vegetables such as kiwis, chestnuts, pineapples and carrots with the addition of several ice balloons on bamboo sticks and a cute little panda shaped ice sculpture. Sugar cane was used to make the number 15 marking the 15th birthday for the two pandas which turned in fact two years old. Uh, in, in the birthday party for the panda pair attracted a large number of fans who crowded the zoo's giant panda exhibition hall. 